So my name is Ken uh, Nischel. I'm uh, Chief of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Also a professor of ophthalmology in the School of Medicine. I trained in the United Kingdom and a mixture of places, King's College in London, Oxford and Birmingham. And then I did my um, fellowship at Sick Kids in Toronto in 1998. Got recruited to Great Ormond Street Hospital Children, where I have been consultant ophthalmologist. And then two years ago, I moved here, having been recruited by UPMC to develop the pediatric ophthalmology and strabismus service. I think the main challenge is aphakic glaucoma. We, we still haven't got on top of why children who have their lenses removed at a very young age develop glaucoma. That's number one. Number two is um, the use of tubes in infants. I think this is not uh, appropriate and unfortunately it sometimes is all we've got. So it's a question of finding an alternative therapy that might be effective uh, without having to put a tube in, in an infant's eye. All of these factors in some ways um, perhaps help, uh, well, perhaps make trabectome uh, something that we should be looking at in children. I'd heard about trabectome a few years, well, two or three years ago uh, at one of the um, meetings in Europe, uh, but it wasn't until I met Nils Lowen, who was recruited here uh, last year, uh, that I began to really uh, think about it seriously as an option for children, especially since uh, Niels has done some eight and nine year olds and said he'd got some good results. I thought it was a, a really good thing to think about. Nobody's looked at whether it would be a viable uh, option before you end up putting a tube in, in children with, for example, aphakic glaucoma, you know, who have open angles. So it's, here's a child with uh, aphakic glaucoma who has two tubes in already. Uh, they're failing, it's not because of a tenon cyst um, and before I think about doing another, if you like, uh, filtration surgery, whether it's ceton or non-ceton, then um, it seemed to me that this was an ideal opportunity to use the trabectome in this child. So if I did the trabectome and let's say I felt the pressure wasn't controlled, then when I or I was suspicious. When I have to measure her pressure again, and I have to give her an anesthetic to do that, um, I can use a handheld OCT to look at the cleft that I made to see if it's sealed up. You know, find out why they fail. And if it's working, find out why it's working. And is the cleft open? Is there a direct connection into Schlemskal? What exactly is going on that makes it work or, or, or not work? 